Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how I landed a six-figure data analyst position with no experience. So I know this sounds crazy. There are some tricks that I found and I'm going to share it with you. I think I got really lucky in the sense that I was ready to take a pay cut to transfer into the field of data. And when I did got this job, I didn't even need to take a pay cut. I actually got a pay increase and I wasn't even working as a data analyst before. So I didn't have any experiences. I was working as a product engineer. And before that, I was working as a manufacturing engineer. And one thing that attracted me to the field of data and tech was that the pay ceiling is a lot higher than traditional engineering jobs. And I was just willing to work my way from the bottom up were many different things I did that landed me this job. So I'm going to pretty much share with you my journey to um, getting into the field of data. So transferable skills. Uh, transferable skills I think is very important. So although my previous jobs were not data related jobs, um, there were aspects of it where I have to use data to understand um, understand the issue or the problems and analyze trends. And in interviews, I kind of drew on those experiences. So for example, in a previous job, I have to look at defect rate and return rate, um, the sales number and all of that stuff and analyze those kind of data and manipulate the data, um, crunch the data. And all of that was pretty much done using Excel, even though it's not SQL or other languages or Python or anything like that, but I was still able to use that to pretty much draw on, pretty much able to talk about that in my interview. I also tried to talk about um, as much stats related things I did in my previous job as well. So for example, calculating confidence interval, normalizing data, um, using control charts, and all of that stuff that I did in my previous job that is related to stats, I probably, I brought that out as much as I could in my data analyst interviews. And I think that helped a lot. So the second thing was I gained programming skills. And although I had some programming knowledge from school and other projects I've done in the past, I wouldn't say that my coding experience is really good and I wouldn't say that I have really I guess great object oriented programming skills so I had some interviews that were about that and I kind of didn't do too well but I collected those questions and kind of um, looked at it after the interviews where I failed and try to see um, how I can improve upon those programming questions. Um, before that I also did a quite a bit of a few macros, I wouldn't say a lot, but I have worked with macros to automate some of the tasks that I did in my previous jobs that were considered tedious. And I actually quite enjoyed that. Um, so I talked about those in my interviews and how I use macros to help make my tasks easier. And in my previous jobs, I didn't really have to use Python or SQL that much but I did practice SQL outside of work and I went online and I tried to learn the language. Um, SQL is a little bit easier to learn than Python, but either way, I did do quite a bit of SQL questions, um, especially before any interviews that I had. Um, I also tried doing some leak code, like probably about like a leak code question a day was something that I was aiming to do, although I didn't always follow it, it did kind of help me with the whole programming logic. And for Python, I took courses in Python, which I'll talk about later in this video. Um, but Python was also something that I focused on. I know nowadays in the data field, like SQL and Python is pretty much the only thing that they really focus on. So that's kind of what I did. Third thing that I try to emphasize a lot in my interview is school projects. So although I don't have a lot of working experience with coding or data, um, I tried to talk a lot about the projects that I did in the past. So it has been quite a while since I graduated, but I mean, I still worked on those projects, right? So I had to go back to my 
schoolwork and kind of think about what I did. So the stuff that I worked on a lot when I was in university was MATLAB. Um, I did a little bit of R, uh, not so much Python, although those are with like the certificates that I did, but I did talk about how I use that to manipulate data and use visualization using MATLAB and all that stuff. So the next thing um, that I talked about um, is certificates. So while I was working at my previous job, my employer kind of contributed a bit of tuition money for taking courses that I want. And so I took project management, um, Six Sigma and data science certificate over the span of four years. And I would say project management didn't really help me at all towards landing this job, so I won't even talk about that. Um, data science certificate was what kind of introduced me to the world of Python, and um, it talked a lot about the key things that I am not only really doing now as a data analyst, but there are data scientists in my team, and they talk about machine learning and prediction and um, you know, all these things and the fact that I have learned them before in this data science certificate kind of helped me become a little bit less lost and um, makes me feel like I kind of understand what is going on. Um, I wouldn't say that course was a very good course to take. I think it was more like it was good to, it kind of introduced me to what data scientist does, but I really learned enough that I feel like I was comfortable with becoming a data scientist. I don't think so. And I don't think it was really the right course for me to take. But anyway, if you're more interested in that, I put the link down below and you can see my review on that data science certificate. So either way, I think that kind of did help a little bit in terms of um, getting me into Python. I think that's a very important thing. There are also projects in that data science certificate that I was able to talk about in my interviews, like the prediction analysis um, projects, which in each four courses for that certificate you have to do. So that kind of left me like four projects that I could talk about. And I think that was very important. Um, for projects, I did data cleaning, data analysis, data visualization, and that was very important. Um, in the data world. The next certificate I did was a Six Sigma certificate and I find that that was actually um, the reason why I got this job. Um, I would say that, you know, they wanted someone with a Six Sigma certificate and I think that there were a project that I was working on in this course that allowed me to talk, talk about how I was able to manipulate data in Six Sigma and also um, I was able to use stats as well in this project and I talked about that as well which I think is very important for them to kind of know that you have your stats down in place or that you know your stats although I would say you don't have to know everything but just know the basic of stats and while you're, job, while you're on the job, you can Google, but you should still at least know the basics like confidence interval, like mean, standard deviation, and all that stuff, which is what they asked me in an interview. So I think that kind of helped. Anyway, in the next session, I'll elaborate more about Six Sigma because I think that kind of deserves a section on its own. Okay, so the secret to landing this job is Six Sigma. Um, the reason why I got this job was because I had my Six Sigma certificate. Um, I guess I got my green belt and that was one thing that they, that is a requirement to landing this job. And I know because my coworkers and my manager told me that the main reason why I was hired was because I had my Six Sigma certificate. And what Six Sigma is, is that it is a process improvement tool that allows you to analyze defects and variations within um, a process. If you want to know more information about that, I'll link you below. I made a video on um, my Six Sigma certificate. Um, it's pretty much a review about that course, but I'll give you more information about it. Um, 
So I think that one thing that I realized while I was job browsing was that a lot of data jobs are now asking for people with Six Sigma certificate and I think that kind of weeds out a lot of people who have data skills but don't have Six Sigma because they're really different. Um, people with Six Sigma usually come from like an engineering background, they work in manufacturing, they you know work in product design, it's, it's more engineering related and engineering jobs usually require Six Sigma but not so much for people who are in data and I think that wasn't really something that they really needed back then. But I think now that they are starting to want more people with this Six Sigma, um, I guess Six Sigma designation. So other tips is um, just keep applying. Um, I had like so much interviews before I landed this job and as each interview went on, I kind of gathered the questions that they would ask um, that are related to stats and kind of improve on those questions and find the correct answer to them. Um, and then I realized that most of the questions are pretty much the same in most data jobs anyway. So that's kind of what I did. And also um, practice your SQL skills. I think that is probably more important than the Python skills if you're planning to go into data analysts. Not so much data science. I think data science is a lot um, you need more skills for that so um, get your Six Sigma certificate if you haven't already and just keep applying and keep applying until you get something is probably something that I would say <laughs> so I hope that was helpful for everyone out there who is thinking about shifting gears into data so good luck for those who are planning to, uh, who is still trying, um, I think it is possible because I did it and I, I really enjoy this job a lot more. So hope this helps you get your foot in the door and if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. Thanks for watching, bye!